Why would a doctor turn around and perform painful and degrading experiments on his patients? Did something like this ever happen? What punishment is enough for someone this evil? From September 1st, 1939 to September 2nd, 1945, the majority of the world's countries were locked in the Second World War. Hitler and the Nazis believed that Germans were members of the Aryan race. They believed that they were on top of the racial hierarchy and planned to unite a racially pure German state. The Nazis also believed that European Jews were enemies of Germany and took steps to exterminate them. Among the notorious Nazis who terrorized the Jews, there was a doctor who took sadistic joy in his experiments on Jewish prisoners. His inhumane acts would later give him the nickname, the Angel of Death. Joseph Rudolf Mengele was born on the 16th of March, 1911. Mengele's father founded the Carl Mengele & Sons Company, a company that produced farm machinery for milling, sawing, and baling. So, Mengele came from a rather wealthy family. Mengele earned his PhD in anthropology from the University of Munich in 1935. Later, he worked with German geneticist Otmar Freiherr von Verschuer. Von Verschuer had an interest in researching twins. Mengele joined the Nazi party in 1937 and the Schutzstaffel, or SS, in 1938. Members of the SS wore a small black ink tattoo located on the underside of their left arm, but Mengele refused to wear the tattoo, not wanting to defile his body. Mengele earned honorable military badges during his time with the SS, but in 1942 he got wounded in action and was declared unfit for active service. After his recovery, Mengele worked again with von Verschuer, who was the director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Anthropology, Human Heredity and Eugenics at that time. Von Verschuer encouraged Mengele to apply for a transfer to the concentration camp service. After his application was successful, he was posted to Auschwitz, a labor camp and extermination camp for prisoners of the Nazis. Here, he was made the chief physician of the Romani family camp at a sub-camp in Auschwitz called Birkenau. The SS doctors were responsible for choosing which Jewish prisoners would be fit for labor and which would be killed in the gas chambers. Mengele was not among the SS doctors assigned to select the prisoners, but he chose to do it to find subjects for his experiments. In his time at Auschwitz, Mengele conducted the deadly experiments that gave him the nickname the Angel of Death. He used the Jewish inmates to further his research into heredity. He disregarded the health and safety of his subjects by making use of inhumane procedures that a vast majority of his victims didn't survive. His research focused on identical twins, people with eyes of different colors, dwarfs, and people with physical abnormalities. Mengele received a grant from the German Research Foundation at the request of von Verschuer. Mengele sent reports and shipments of specimens regularly to von Verschuer. The grant was used to build a pathology laboratory at Auschwitz. The experiment of twins was motivated by the Nazi belief in the genetic superiority of the Aryan race. They wanted to uncover strategies for racially desirable Germans to reproduce more twins. Mengele's research subjects were treated slightly better than the other prisoners. They lived in their barracks and ate meals of somewhat better quality. They were also temporarily spared from execution in the gas chamber, mostly until Mengele had no more use for them. There were also children in Mengele's barracks. He would gift them sweets and introduce himself as Uncle Mengele, but these acts couldn't hide how sadistic the Angel of Death was. He killed some of his subjects with lethal injections gunshots, and deadly experiment procedures. Mengele experimented on up to 1,500 sets of twins during his time at Auschwitz. Many of them were children, and most of them died. According to a former Auschwitz inmate doctor, Mengele was capable of being so kind to the children, to have them become fond of him, to bring them sugar, to think of small details in their daily lives, and to do things we would genuinely admire. And then, next to that, the crematoria smoke, and these children, tomorrow or in a half hour, he is going to send them there. For his experiments on twins, Mengele would experiment on one twin and use the other as a control subject to monitor the changes. He would amputate limbs or infect one twin with typhus. Those who survived the experiments were sometimes killed, and their bodies were dissected. If one twin died, Mengele would kill the other twin so the corpses could be compared. For his eye experiments, Mengele injected chemicals into the eyes of his living subjects. He did this in an attempt to change the color of their eyes. He would remove healthy teeth from dwarfs. He also performed experiments on pregnant women before sending them to the gas chambers. 
Mengele's authority extended beyond his experiments. Once, there was a typhus epidemic in the women's camp. Mengele ordered the deaths of 600 Jewish women in one block. Then, he had the building washed and disinfected. Occupants of neighboring blocks were bathed, fumigated, and given new clothes before they were moved to new blocks. This earned Mengele a promotion and a military badge. On the 17th of January, 1945, Mengele and other Auschwitz doctors were transferred to Gross Rosen, a concentration camp in Lower Silesia. Ten days later, the Red Army of the Soviet Union liberated Auschwitz from Nazi control. Mengele was now on the run from the Soviets. He gave all incriminating documents in his possession to a nurse and kept running from the Soviets. In June 1945, justice would catch up with him for a while when American soldiers captured him as a prisoner of war. However, the Americans were not aware of Mengele's misdeeds. They also couldn't identify him as an SS officer because he did not wear the SS blood group tattoo. The Americans released him after a month. Mengele used a false name, Fritz Holman, and went on the run again. He went to recover his Auschwitz records from German areas occupied by the Soviets, but managed to avoid capture, which would have meant his death. After the Second World War, there was a system of escape routes that Nazis and other fascists used to escape Europe. The routes were nicknamed Rat Lines. They were designed to go through ports in Spain and Italy to South America. The rat lines were created by diplomats and intelligence officers on the secret order of Juan Perón, an Argentine army general who later became president. Naturally, thousands of Nazis fleeing Europe made their way to Argentina. Mengele was one of them. On April 17, 1949, Mengele escaped from Germany. With the help of former SS officers, he used the rat lines to travel to Genoa, Italy. From Genoa, he got a passport under the name Helmut Gregor and boarded a ship to Argentina. While in Buenos Aires, Mengele worked as a carpenter for a while. Then he worked as a salesman, selling farm equipment for Carl Mengele and Sons, his family's business. It is also possible that Mengele practiced medicine without a license. In 1958, his past crimes had become public knowledge, and he became scared of being found by Nazi hunters. He ran to Paraguay, but kept making business trips to Argentina. Between 1945 and 1946, the Nuremberg Trials were being held in the Palace of Justice, Nuremberg, Germany. During these trials, the German leadership that supported the Nazi dictatorship was uncovered. The trials had 177 defendants, 24 of them were sentenced to death, and 20 got life imprisonment. Mengele's name was mentioned several times during the trials. However, the Allied forces believed that Mengele was probably already dead. Nazi hunter Hermann Longbein discovered Mengele's divorce papers some years later, which led him to believe that Mengele was still alive. In June 1959, the West German authorities issued a warrant for his arrest, but Mengele had already fled to Paraguay. Isser Harrell was the director of Israel's intelligence agency, Mossad. In 1960, he led a mission to capture Adolf Eichmann, one of the major organizers of the Holocaust. Eichmann had been hiding in Argentina like Mengele, Harold planned to capture Mengele as well and take both men back to Israel to face trial. Eichmann gave Harold an address to find Mengele, but the search was not fruitful, so Harold abandoned the search. The news of Eichmann's capture was also spread, so Mengele knew that the walls were closing around him. With the help of Nazi supporter Wolfgang Gerhard, Mengele ran to Brazil. Gerhard and Mengele stayed with a Hungarian couple called Geza and Geta, Stamer. With investment from Mengele, the Stamers bought farms in Nova Europa and Serra Negra. The Stamers didn't know Mengele's identity till 1963, but Gerhard convinced them to keep Mengele secret. Gerhard returned to Germany in 1971, and Mengele took his identity. By 1974, his relationship with the Stamers had grown sour. They didn't let him live with them again. His health declined from 1972, and he suffered a stroke in 1976. Mengele's son, Rolf, visited him in 1977. The two had not met since 1956. Rolf noted that his father was still an unrepentant Nazi. Mengele claimed that he had never personally harmed anyone and only carried out his duties as an officer. Mengele was visiting his friends Wolfram and Lizalette Bosert in 1979. He was encouraged by them to go swimming. He had another stroke and died in the water. His corpse was buried under the name Wolfgang Gerhard.